welcome to Pineapple Pizza Podcast, where we serve up delicious slices of mythology, cryptozoology, and urban legends. It's an interesting combination of flavors. Weird, but it works. Today's special is the Kuchisaki Ona. Which is the slit-mouthed woman. <sighs> this is an urban legend special. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I'm scared already. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to introduce ourselves? Sure. Oh. Sorry. Um, I'm Lindsay. I'm Emily. And I'm Ashley. We're professional podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> Most days. Some days. Most days. Some Am days. I professional? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we know what we're doing. So the Kuchisaki Ona, or the Slip Mouth Woman, is an urban legend in Japan that dates back as far as the Edo period in the 17th century, where she was described as a sort of yokai or oh, an that. right <laughs> or an anya, which is a malicious spirit. Ooh, I like that. Yep. So broken down, the name Kuchisaki Ona literally means kuchi for mouth, which is different for us. <laughs> Sake, which is slit or split mouth. An Ona for woman. <laughs> I think Emily's broken. <laughs> yeah, I think Emily's gonna like, her head's gonna explode from holding that in. <laughs> the coochie being a mouth was just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Japan and America, coochie does not mean mouth. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> I mean, it's a, time of, a type of mouth, but not really the one that you talk out of. So. <laughs> well, it has lips, but I wouldn't call it a mouth. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> According to Koku Gakuin University Associate Professor Ikura Yoshiyuki, the tale of the Kushisaki Ona is the first purely Japanese urban legend. So there are many versions of the story of the Slipmouth Woman, and they all have common threads. So in the most famous telling of the legend, a beautiful woman was married to a jealous man who suspected that she was cheating on him. And in this case, he was correct. After learning that his wife had not only fallen for another man, but was also planning on leaving him, he flew into a rage and knocked her unconscious before tying her up. When she woke up, she saw her husband brandishing a large pair of scissors, threatening to kill her if she left him before he sliced her face ear to ear to make a permanent smile. Joker style? Like yeah. the double like, smile? Like the, the Glasgow smile, yeah. Uh, oh, my face hurts. Yeah. Who will think you're pretty now? He asked before he decapitated her. Oh my God. Why did you do that then? After realizing what he'd done, he'd stabbed himself to death. So in some stories, she's the concubine of a samurai. In others, she was attacked and disfigured by a woman jealous of her beauty or even mutilated herself with her razor sharp teeth. Uh which I don't know how you would do that. So. How do you, how do you chew your face into a, a I don't how do you, how do you aggressively bite both cheeks at the same time with your Maybe. razor sharp teeth? Yep. So other telling suggests that she's an escaped mental patient who just figured herself. Okay. While another states that it happened during a dental procedure. <gasps> and in this one, procedure. Yeah. So in this one, when her mouth was open. One of the products the dentist used had a wretched smell that caused such a visceral reaction she couldn't sit still, and the dentist accidentally slit open both sides of her mouth as she struggled to get away from the smell. They're both covering their faces right now in horror. God. <laughs> that, mm -mm, nope. I have a thing about teeth. Don't go there with the... <laughs> Just making sure my cheeks are still solid. It's okay. <laughs> we'll get through it. What I were promise. those dentists doing? <sighs> I don't know. So the Kuchisaki Ona is very vain, and despite her disfigurement, she appears to be a beautiful Asian woman with long black hair and a simple beige trench coat. Very specific. A trench coat. Yeah. So like cast style from Supernatural with his big old beige trench coat. I mean, probably without the spiky hair, though. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe she rocked the pixie cut. Maybe. Maybe. 
So in order to blend in, she's described as wearing a surgical mask to cover her mouth, which was already a common practice in Japan pre-COVID for people who are either are sick, are recovering from being sick, or to protect them from the smog. So wouldn't be out of the ordinary to see anybody wearing a mask on the street. Right. That's been pretty standard practice for them for quite a while for a lot of Asian countries, right? Yeah. Well, there's such population density Mm -hmm. that it's kind of necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So being able to hide in plain sight is part of how she stalks and selects her prey. Because she is always covering the lower half of her face with a mask, scarf, or fan, she's able to wait and hide in the shadows or travel under the cover of night before suddenly blocking your path. Holding a pair of large scissors, she'll ask, Watashi ya kare? Or, am I pretty? And before you say anything, she'll reveal her face with its bloody exposed teeth and tongue and ask, Kore demo? Or, am I pretty now? I don't like that. I don't either. And how you answer will decide your fate. If you scream and say yes, she will slash your face to match hers. Running away won't save you, as she's unnaturally fast and might cut you in half in a fit of rage. Good. And it, yep. And if you say no, she'll walk away, but that doesn't mean you're safe. It just means that you've delayed your fate until you get home, where she'll lay in wait to kill you in your sleep. So you're screwed no matter what. Yep. <sighs> That's like... You know when you've had that friend that puts on that piece of clothing and they're like, don't I look good? And you have to be like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-huh. But deadlier. (laughs) With giant scissors, yes. Yeah. (laughs) And in some tellings, she doesn't carry scissors. She's been described as carrying a knife, a machete, and even a scythe like the Grim Reaper. Uh, I don't... I... That's not subtle. You can't really I, carry one of those through the public pretty subtly. Well, and I feel like those variations kind of also depended on what prefecture of Japan you were in, mm-hmm. because some were much more rural, where having a scythe would make a lot more sense because you're in a rural farming community, whereas, you know, kind of depends on where you were at in the country. I just pictured her in a crowd, wherever, just walking around with the scythe, <laughs> and people are like... <laughs> She's cute, but she looked crazy. I mean, if it's Comic Con, you're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they have those. I can't remember what the term is that they use, but the people that basically dress like anime characters yeah. all the time. It's not cosplay for them. There's a there's a special term for what they do, but they have the Harajuku yeah. girls that are always dressed up like yeah little girls. That's weird. yeah the Lolita characters. Yeah. Yeah. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> so, so a modern version of the slip mouth woman is that she's an unstable woman who used to chase and terrify local school children, which understandably pissed off a number of parents. And when the police came to scope out the situation, she chose to flee into oncoming traffic where she was killed instantly. And in addition to getting lots of internal damage, her injuries included facial lacerations reminiscent of a jagged bloody smile. That's hot. Hot, yeah. (laughs) And even though this sounds a bit ludicrous, in the 1970s, she was seen and feared everywhere in the Nagasaki prefecture. Terrified elementary and middle school age children reported seeing her everywhere. And the police bumped up night patrols and put out warnings to the locals after fears that there was a crazed killer roaming the streets. And then in 1979, just as suddenly as she appeared, her appearances immediately stopped. Hmm. And in 2007, an unnamed and unknown coroner was reported to have found a number of shocking cases of children dying at night. The common thread being that they each experienced sightings of a woman with similar features at the time and place of their deaths. (laughs) And in another telling of this urban legend, a young boy by the name of John was walking home from school one day when the slip mouth woman appeared before him and asked him her famous question. And as he turned to flee, she broke protocol and she just grabbed and snapped his neck. Unfortunately for John, this didn't kill him instantly. Oh, no. And instead, he was found and taken to the hospital where they believed he'd make a miraculous full recovery. But instead, he choked out the words, the slip mouth woman and died of fright, which 
Was it like ring style where their face is all twisted and they're like... That's kind of what I pictured. Only more like, <laughs> like where like his head's at a 90 degree angle. Oh yeah, because it's all twisted. <laughs> his neck's all, all messed up. Oh, is it like, uh, remember Casper? Yes. <laughs> the guy that comes out and his head's on backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. <laughs> so this one, I thought this one was kind of funny. So one story tells of a businessman named Taro who visited a bar to enjoy a celebratory drink one night after work. And as he entered, he spotted a beautiful woman sitting alone wearing a surgical mask and he struck up a conversation with her. After chatting for a while, he asked her if she'd like to go somewhere more private. And as they entered a quiet alley and he leaned in for a kiss, she stopped him to ask, am I beautiful? And when he replied that of course she was, she removed the mask to reveal her mutilated face and Tara was never seen again. Okay. He's going in for a kiss on a woman who's got her face covered, which means she's obviously sick or something. I know. Like, he's not worried about what he's catching, and she should be worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I take away from that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, obviously, since people have encountered her and that we know what the stories are, that must mean there's ways to escape. So, according to legend, there are ways to escape certain death when encountering the slipmouth woman. The most common is through distraction. Some claim that if you offer her money or hard candy, such as a caramelized sugar known as beko am, it will distract her long enough for you to nope out of there. That's random. <laughs> that is very weird. Like, it seems like grannies are just, they're golden. <laughs> I know, I was like, so should I just have like a pocket full of like Werther's Originals and just like chuck them at her? <laughs> Just make sure I stop at the pharmacy on the way out the door, you know. She's going to be like the dog from Up. <laughs> well, well, candy. Candy? Caramel? My favorite. <laughs> and it just like drips out of her mouth. Oh. <laughs> no, don't like that. <laughs> but it's like, if you gave her something to eat, why would she eat it? That's true. <laughs> like, I don't get that. That's weird. And Maybe. Can, yeah. Her alcohol bill has to be expensive because it's like 90% just ends up on her shirt. <laughs> or she has to use like a really long straw. <laughs> she just tilts her head back with a funnel. <laughs> uh. She just goes to all the keggers. <laughs> so you can also cheat death by choosing your words carefully. If you remain calm, which good luck when she asks you if she's pretty and respond with, you're okay, or so-so, or if you flip the question entirely and ask her, do you think I'm pretty? It causes her to pause and consider her response, which gives you time to, you know, skedaddle. I feel like that last option is so you. I know, but I'd be like, <laughs> am I pretty? I think I'm a snack. <laughs> and she'd be like, what's a snack? Do you have candy? Do <laughs> candy? Give me a caramel. <laughs> Is that a word that's original in your pocket, or you just decided to see me? <laughs> it's both. <laughs> and there are also some silly theories that state if you yell the word pomade at her three times, she'll disappear like a reverse Beetlejuice. Like hair pomade? Yes. What that is? Yeah. Like for dudes to put in their hair? Yeah, like basically hair gel. That is so weird. Yeah. I could not really understand why that would be a thing. It's weird how she's a reverse Beetlejuice, but also the Joker and Freddy Krueger. She's just a big mix of shit. And yeah. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's another one. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Burton wrote this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Burton's a jilted ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> We've solved it. Yep. <laughs> So, if everyone that encountered her died, there obviously wouldn't be an urban legend. And there are a few tales of people who met with the Kuchisaki Ona and survived. So, one such story is that of a boy named Chance, funnily enough, who encountered the terrifying apparition as he was taking a shortcut through the woods. Which, never take a shortcut through the woods. That's problem number one right there. Exactly. And despite his mother's warnings, because kids are stupid... He decided to go through the remote area when the Kuchisake Ona suddenly stepped out from behind a tree, 
causing Chase to trip and fall back in terror as she gazed down at him and asked, am I pretty? As she ripped off her mask, Chance grabbed his cross necklace and screamed at her, I banished you to the shadow of death. I corrupt you to the netherworld from which no one has come. Into the dirt no being should ever cross. And instead of causing her to run, demonic hands leapt from the ground and grabbed the legs of the Kuchisaki Ona. And as they pulled her into the dirt, she glared at Chance and said, I will be back and I will tear you to pieces. You know, I think that might be one of the most believable stories I've heard on here so far. Yeah, Everything same. about that seems legit. <laughs> I know, fact, I talk like that all the time. In fact, too legit. Too, too, too legit. legit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Bunch of nerds. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even though there haven't been any new sur- surges and sightings of the Kuchisake Ona since the 1970s, Legend states that she will eventually return to punish the people of Japan. Instead of appearing in the guise of a beautiful woman wearing a surgical mask, she will be the embodiment of death, decomposed with half of her face rotted away. And when she does appear, reappear, looking for an answer to her age-old question, you should probably pray you give her the right answer so you don't pay the ultimate price. So now we're going to go into the truth behind the legend. Oh, there's some truth behind it? There's some truth behind the legend. Ooh. Is it the candy? (laughs) It's the Werther's Originals. There was somebody just obsessed. Someone was like, I have all this candy, all this caramel I need to offload. It gets rid of this demon woman. Just start buying it and keep it in your pockets. (laughs) It was actually Chance. We know that. It was actually Chance. (laughs) His story. Cross cross necklace sales and caramel sales just skyrocketed in the 70s. (laughs) So in Japanese culture, it's believed that the spirits of those killed in particularly violent ways do not rest well, such as abused wives, tortured captives, and defeated enemies. And during the Edo period of the 17th to the 19th centuries, a large number of the Kuchisaki Ona sightings and attacks were blamed on kitsune, or kitsune, which is another form of yokai who are shape-shifting trickster gods. Typically, when you see them depicted in um, illustrations, they're like fox spirits. Hmm. And so they would seduce and slaughter young men. Sounds like the Joro Gumo. Mm-hmm. Less legs. the spider bits. Yeah. <laughs> Less legs, more tails. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a leg man, you're a butt man. <laughs> no man. So university professor... Ikura Yoshiyuki has a theory for the origin of at least the modern retelling of this urban legend. So in the town of Yaotsu in Gifu Prefecture in 1978, an old woman in a farming family reported spotting the notorious slit mouth woman standing in a corner of her garden. A local newspaper, the Gifu Niki Miki Shinbun, published an article on January 26, 1976 about this sighting and the story and legend spread amongst the children in the area. Other stories were published in the Shukan Usha'i, Usai on March 23rd and in the magazine Shukan Shinsho on April 5th of 1979. And like any game of telephone, the tellings would change slightly with variations saying she wore a mask, sometimes a red coat, or even carrying a sickle. And some stories stated she could run 100 meters in six seconds. Impressive. Mm-hmm. Loved hard candy, like any decent old woman does, and that she hated the smell of hair pomade. There you go. Which, again, why? Uh, I'm guessing that those guys in that that era must just have worn way too much, and this was somebody's way of slipping in and saying, guys, you need to (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) So around six months after the first printing of this story, the rumor had spread amongst the nation, and the cause of the spread was cram schools. So for people outside of Japan who may be unclear, cram schools are private schools that provide supplementary classes to prepare students for school and university entrance exams. So it is exactly what it sounds like. Yep. So cram schools would bring together children from all over Japan. So it could be different towns and prefectures. And these children would share the stories that they'd heard with one another, who would in turn spread the story to others until it eventually reached other papers and TV stations. 
And another aspect of the legend that made it stick as much as it did was the fact that cram schools operated in the evening. So it would often be dark when the children would be released to head home. And these children may be exposed to adults they wouldn't normally see, such as businessmen heading to bars after work and women heading to late night jobs, not to mention drunks leaving the bars. Or women heading to other late night jobs. Yeah. Do so I look pretty? Yeah. You like what you see? So worried parents and teachers started to conduct patrols at night and arrange for children to return home in groups for protection in numbers. And the rumors of the Kuchisake Ona started to die down in the summer of 79, but her powerful image continued to linger long after. And as the dawn of the internet age brought with it the advent of websites and blogs, the old tales of the Kuchisake Ona began to resurface and spread like wildfire, sparking a resurgence in the tellings and reimaginings of the story itself. And the resurgence of these stories has brought its own set of telephone-esque nuances, such as the version in South Korea where she wears a red mask, and the fact that in places such as Okinawa, Taiwan, South Korea, and China, folklore dictates that evil spirits can only travel in a straight line, which means that you could lose the Kuche Sake Ona if you were to turn a corner or climb a flight of stairs. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't there some old skit about the way to escape the Titsi fly was to run in zigzags? Did you guys ever hear that? <laughs> I didn't, but it makes sense. I, I recognize the name of the Titsi fly, yeah. It's something yeah. something really dumb like that, yeah. Yeah, where... the, you have to zigzag to get away from it. And it used to scare me as a kid. My mom would be like, oh, the Titsi fly's going to get you. You better zigzag. So I would zigzag <laughs> everywhere I went. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this sounds like to me. It's a freaking Titsi fly. So another version states she has a skinhead boyfriend who also has a slit mouth and wears a mask to help them blend in. And then they both kill kill people with each other. So it's like a fun date night. You know what they (laughs) say, the couple that slays together stays together. (laughs) Very true. (laughs) How do their makeout sessions go, man? I feel like that's like your full face. (laughs) Just picture like like Predator. (laughs) <laughs> or like a demogorgon <laughs> oh no it makes me think of like if you had the pac-man and pac-woman coming at each other just like <laughs> <laughs> one of them has to go completely sideways and it fits together yeah. they have to come at it at like 45 degree angles <laughs> so they won't fit together <laughs> oh, start God. knocking teeth instead of knocking boots yep So in pop culture, the Kuche Sake Ona has made several appearances. For example, she appeared in the 1994 animated Studio Ghibli film, Pom Poco, and a 1996 live-action short film, Kuche Sake Ona. She was also referenced in the 1998 film adaptation of Ring, not the American remake, as well as an appearance in the manga Mob Psycho 100. She's had a movie franchise created about her, starting with the 2007 film Carved, the Slit Mouth Woman, and the 2008 films Carved 2, The Scissors Massacre, and The Slit Mouth Woman Zero, The Beginning, because everyone needs an origin story. <laughs> <laughs> and her final film in the franchise came out in 2012, Kuchisake Ona Returns. I feel like I need to watch these. So that is the story of the Kuchisake Ona. And I can list all my sources if you'd like to know where I got all the information from. Yes, please. Where did you get this information from? I am curious. So I got my sources are Ranker.com, Nippon.com, Wikipedia, TBSnews.net, CSIN.com, and JWWebmagazine.com, which was about Japanese scariest urban legends. Mm. I bet they have quite a few. Yeah. I'm sorry if that was a little short. What, the story? Yeah. Oh, no, it's fine. I thought it was good. I'm think. afraid to go to sleep now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Between the, the spider horror from last episode. <laughs> I'm probably okay because the spider whore goes after men. So, yeah. but yeah. slip mouth woman sounds equal opportunity. So she yeah. might get me. Well, try the zigzag. I will zigzag. try. <laughs> or just start keeping some Werther's originals at the side of your bed. On like a little night table. Ugh. Yeah, it seems you like just like there. just like crinkle it whenever you hear a sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yell pomade. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Just keep a jar of pomade open on the side of your bed. <laughs> Next time we go to record, Ashley's hair is completely slicked back. <laughs> Almost died and it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go full Elvis. There you go. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Can I pull it off? No, but I will do it anyway. <laughs> we come back and she's just got like a bunch of Werther's Originals, like hard candy wrappers all around her. <laughs> Is it gonna be like uh, the salt ring, but this time it's just Werther's candies? It's a caramel ring. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Stay away. Back. I think you're beautiful. Don't get me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to tell her that she's, eh, you're, you're okay. <laughs> you're not so the harsh. prettiest, but you're not the ugliest. I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me after a few beers. <laughs> <laughs> More like one beer because I'm a lightweight, but yeah. <laughs> So I think right now, given COVID and everybody wearing masks, we need to be on high alert. Watch out for people in beige trench, trench coats. coats, I guess. <laughs> How many Although, those around? I never really trust anybody wearing a trench coat, to be honest, because, you know, when we were kids, the Flashers. big joke was like the flasher thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can never fully trust anybody in a trench coat. Anyway. It's always like old British guys that wear trench coats like that. Speaking of British... Anybody else find a lot of those names very, very American or very Christian name? Yeah. John and Chance. And Chance. Be God in the name of... What is it? <laughs> yeah. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> and then demon hands come up <laughs> out of the ground. <laughs> Drag me to hell style. <laughs> I know. Part of me really wants to watch the movies just to see how horrible they are. Because, like, she got four movies out of this deal. And then the naming of them was just atrocious. So you know they're going to be good <laughs> with names I mean, that bad. I mean, with a name like Scissor Massacre, you know it's going to be really good. Like Penny from Big Bang Theory. Serial apist. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Who names this? Who got paid for this? <laughs> well, thank you for that story. That was creepy. I've never heard that one before. Have you, Ashley? No, and I'm horrified. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's a great fucking story, though. Oh, I let an F-bomb out. I'm sorry. (laughs) Delete that. That was a great story. (laughs) If I cursed, I I would have laid down an (laughs) F-bomb. We don't curse on this show. We are sweet angels. I have never done anything wrong in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Well, since our last meetup, did you guys have anything interesting happen? <laughs> I ate a hot dog. You ate yeah. a hot dog. That's going to come back to bite you, isn't it? Probably not. I love hot dogs. Oh, really? I could eat hot dogs all day. Yeah. They're always, they're tasty. They're really good. They hit my stomach like rocks. Ugh. Have you guys watched Exhibit A? No. Oh, it's really so. good. It takes a look at some of the benefits and the drawbacks like uh, to forensic sciences. So how they can be used, how they can be useful, what they can tell you, and then examples of who got it really wrong and people are still in prison because of... I need to watch that. It's good. (sighs) Writing it down. The last one I watched on there was the Jeffrey Epstein. Ooh, that made me angry. I was enraged the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long people were saying something's wrong, something's wrong, and everybody's like, mm, whatever. That it's sounds about right, though. The FBI just brush it off and nothing happens. He was rich, so it's fine, I guess. Yeah. But I found out from someone that he has like a micro penis or had a micro penis. So that makes it slightly more bearable, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really, but I don't know. It's still like being forced to sit on someone's toe or something. Oh, I didn't mean physically bearable. Oh, okay. I meant it gives me something I can make fun of them for. And oh, okay. That, like, no, it's still, yeah. No. <laughs> My unhealthy coping mechanism is if I can make fun of it, I can deal with it. So this yeah. gave me that. Exhibit A is going to frustrate you, though, Ashley. Just be prepared. Because the stuff that these quote-unquote experts push through and get people convicted on is trash. 
Oh, I already know some of it just from being on a true crime podcast. But it's frustrating. You're just like, how could any, how could you as a jury sit and convict somebody on this? Well, the thing with juries is that lawyers get to help decide who's on them Mm -hmm. and prosecutors in some areas are known to strike jurors who seem too intelligent for just that reason. Mm -hmm. Which is so yeah. awful. Yeah. And we've talked about that before. I'm disgusted that they'd rather get it solved than get it right. Yep. All the time. Well, let's talk about something better then. What's happy? What's happy? I don't know. What is good? When this comes out, 2020 will be over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know yet if 2020 ends on a <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I started reading um, the book that you got me for my birthday. Thank you. Yay. I'm glad. Shall we uh, close it up? Sure. Thanks for joining Pineapple Pizza Podcast for today's special, the Kuchi Sake Ona Urban Legend. Though we're sweet and cheesy, and not everybody understands our awesomeness. But we're glad you do. Question mark. (laughs) Question mark. If you're enjoying the show and you'd like to help support us, check out our Tee Public shop for some amazingly fun and funny merch. Or if you want to do a one-time donation, you can do that on buymeacoffee.com and buy us a fresh slice because we can never get enough of basically anything, if we're being honest. If you absolutely love the show and you want to check out some fantastic bonus content, you can become a donor on Patreon and earn all kinds of amazing benefits. We have three tiers to accommodate almost any budget. The $3 Mythbuster, the $7 Cryptid Hunter, and the $15 Storyteller. Become a patron today and start enjoying all the perks and extra content right away. Don't forget, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at PineAppPizzaPod. That's PineAppApp Pizza Pod. You can also send us questions, comments, and topic ideas at pineapppizzapod at gmail.com. Don't forget, A-P-P. That's important. Thanks for stopping in for some deliciously weird morsels. And just remember, no matter how you slice it, you're awesome. And we love you.